Okay, so uh, in this video, uh, we are going to uh, begin the concept, begin the topic of joint distributions. Uh, now, we've already seen joint distributions in previous videos, but we're now going to uh, formalize the theory. Uh, okay, so uh, joint distributions then. So in this video, we're going to see the example of joint uh, discrete random variables. So, uh, and in the next video, we're going to see uh, the example of joint continuous uh, random variables. So this is the ba this is the idea basically. You have a probability space, so an abstract probability space again, which consists of a sample space, a set of events, and a probability measure. Now, we've already seen the concept of a random variable, which is an x, uh, a function x, which is going to ascribe to every outcome in this uh, probability space. It's going to ascribe it a real number. Now, if uh, the random variable x is discrete, it means that the set of uh, real numbers which you ascribe uh, to these um, outcomes of the uh, probability space uh, is either finite or it's countably infinite. I, it, that's the meaning of discrete. Um, now, in joint distributions, what you do is you ascribe more than one. You uh, well, you ascribe more than one real number to each point. So you have another random variable y, which is again discrete and is uh, is going to ascribe to every outcome another number y. So what you can think of is you can think of every point s being ascribed a pair a pair of um, real numbers, so the uh, real number x of s and y of s. And basically what we can now do is think of that, the distribution of this basically, rather than uh, the distribution of each of these, and that is the joint distribution. Uh, so if I give you an example, that's the, the best way to understand this is examples. Uh, so we go back to our old friend, uh, which is the uh, probability space where you flip a coin twice. Uh, so uh, you can... Um, so uh, the, uh, the uh, outcomes you can get of that experiment are you can get a head and then a head, you can get a head and then a tail, you can get a tail and then a head, or you can get a tail and then a tail. Now, uh, let's split this up, let's define two random variables on here. So firstly, let's define the random variable big X, which is going to uh, map you onto 0 or 1, and X is going to map an outcome onto 0, if you get a tail first, so tail first, and it's going to map it onto one if you get a head first. Okay, uh, so um, if we split this up into the two events then, where it will split down here, and both of these two outcomes here will be mapped onto one, and both of these outcomes here will be mapped onto zero, which is a bit unfortunate that I have uh, put them the opposite way to the way that they are. So these two are going to be mapped onto zero, and um, these two here, where you get a head first, are going to be mapped onto one. Okay, uh, so also I should have given you the parameter right at the start. Let's say P is the probability that you actually get ahead on any uh, throw. Uh, so the probability that you get ahead first is going to be P, and the probability that you get a tail first is going to be Q, which is the symbol we use to denote 1 minus P. So this is 1 minus P. Uh, so we therefore know that X is Bernoulli distributed uh, with probability P. But we know that we can ascribe another random variable to this, which is y, uh, which is going to ascribe a uh, 1 or a 0, and it's going to ascribe, y is going to map each outcome onto, it's going to map it onto 0, if you get a tail second, if tail second, and it's going to map it onto a 1, if the second flip is a head, if head is the second flip. Okay, uh, so that splits this set up like this, so down the uh, vertical, and um, both of these ones here, where you get a head in the second flip, are going to be mapped onto uh, 1. And uh, both of these ones here, where you get a tail in the second flip, are going to be mapped onto 0. And again, the probability of getting a head in the second flip is going to be P, and the probability of getting a um, 0 in the second flip is going to be Q. But what we could think of this as doing, we could think of this as a joint distribution, which is going to map each outcome onto a pair of numbers. So we could think of the joint distribution, so let's put another mapping here, joint distribution, where um, each of these is mapped onto a pair of numbers, an ordered pair of numbers. So head head is going to be mapped onto 1 by x, and it's going to be mapped onto 1 by, uh, one by um, y as well. So its pair is going to be 1, 1. Uh, so head head is going to be mapped onto a 1 1. So if I split this up in like a uh, table like this, and this head tail 
gets a 1 from x and it gets a 0 from y, so it's going to be mapped onto 1, 0. And tail head is going to be mapped onto, um, it's going to be mapped onto 0 by uh, x and it's going to be mapped onto 1 by y. And finally, tail tail is going to be mapped onto 0 in both of them. So we could think of another distribution, which instead of ascribing just a, a single real number, is going to ascribe a, uh, a ordered pair of real numbers. And we could generalize this further. We could have more than two random variables uh, defined on our probability space. And we could instead think of their joint distribution as, let's say we have n random variables. We could think of the joint uh, distribution as map, or well, the joint random variables is mapping every single um, every single outcome onto n tuples of real numbers. Uh, so if we have three, we'd map them onto uh, three real numbers. So a set of uh, three real numbers. Okay. Uh, so now what we can think of is the probability mass function acting on this set. So if we were to view this as the plane, then the three points we have here are zero, zero, uh, zero, one, uh, one, zero up here, and one, one. Uh, and basically, we could view uh, the probability mass function, the probability that this, uh, let's call this joint random variable, uh, what should we call it, should we call it J for joint random variable, the probability that J is equal to some one of these, uh, so let's say um, little x or little y, uh, is going to be now, a, it's going to be defined on these. So uh, if we work out what the probability of each of these is, the probability of getting 1-1, one, one, uh, because these two random variables are independent, uh, then uh, the probability of this is just the probability of getting the 1 here and times the probability of getting the 1 here, so it's p squared here. Uh, here it's pq uh, because it's the probability to get a head times the probability that you get a tail. Here it's pq and here it's q squared. And you can check that, uh, well, we, shall we just check that quickly? We'll check that p squared plus 2pq plus q squared is equal to 1, we want it to be equal to, so we want to check whether that's true. Well, we can factor this as p plus q squared, and we know that p plus q is equal to 1, therefore we get 1 squared is equal to 1, so it is true. Okay, so we could then view the probability mass function as being a function from this set of ordered pairs of real numbers, usually denoted R2, onto the real numbers. Uh, so we could view this probability mass function as acting now on R2, and it would describe, uh, it would describe to 1, 1, it would describe the number P squared, to uh, 0, 1, it would describe the number PQ, to 1, 0, it would describe the number PQ, and to 0, 0, it would describe the number Q squared. So that is the concept of how that well that's the concept of a joint random variable. Uh, that what we are now saying is rather than ascribing to each each outcome a single real number, ascribe to it n tuples of real numbers. In this case, we just described two real numbers, but in you could ascribe arbitrarily the arbitrarily many um, real numbers uh, and. Uh, therefore, we now view the PMF, uh, the probability mass function probability mass function, so PMF, as being a function, uh, so mapping uh, Rn, where you have n random variables in your joint district, uh, joint random variable, n random variables, uh, you map, it maps Rn, uh, because now these n tuples of real numbers are in Rn, and it's going to map it onto um, uh, 0, 1, clearly, because each of the probabilities has to be between 0 and 1. Uh, so that's how the PMF is going to work. So that's uh, the concept of joint distribution, well, joint, uh, well, of course, and of course, this probability, uh, this probability distribution on this new space, this space of n tuples of real numbers, uh, is called the probability distribution. So, or a probability distribution, and you'd say that it was a joint distribution. So that's joint distribution. And so just to reaffirm this concept, what we are now doing in joint random variables is we are ascribing to every outcome of a probability space. So all of these outcomes over here, we are ascribing a well, in this case, we're ascribing an ordered pair of real numbers. Rather than just a single real number, we're ascribing an ordered pair. We're ascribing two real numbers. Uh, and uh, we can generalize this. We can say we could have n random variables here, and we could therefore make a joint distribution which describes the n real numbers to each, to each outcome in the abstract probability space. Um, so then what we'd do is we'd have n tuples of real numbers, and we'd want to have a probability mass function which ascribes to every uh, n tuple of real numbers, it would have to ascribe a um, 
well, it would describe a probability mass, and uh, that's uh, that's the generalization of the probability mass function to these uh, these other random variables, these joint random variables. And basically, this set of um, of n tuples of real numbers that you have here, uh, it wants to inherit the probability space structure from here, and uh, just in the same way as random variables did. Ex the, basically, all the only generalization, it's still going to be a probability space isomorphism. It's just that we are now saying we're going to map you onto n tuples of real numbers that, rather than real numbers. And uh, the probability measure on this probability space here is now called the joint distribution. Okay, and a, and a way of representing it is still by via the PMF.